Well, hello, everyone. I see you all there in the chat. Um, thank you so much for joining us today for this very special stream that we have. Um, I am now joined by two very special guests who are voice actors from the Legend of Korra animated series. I'm going to let them introduce themselves because they're the important ones here today. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't discuss who was going to say hi first. Uh, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to introduce uh, my my friend and colleague, uh, the marvelous, wonderful, luminous, strong, fantastic Seychelle Gabriel, who, of course, we all also know as Asami. Thank you so much. Um, I will introduce my friend and colleague, <laughs> Janet Barney, who is just a joy and to be around. And I don't have adjectives off the top of my head but you're <laughs> I took them all and funny and talented and amazing um <laughs> so um <laughs> uh, she plays Cora also as, as <laughs> sure most of you know well thank you again both of you for joining us um Janet thank you for kind of initiating this and um for both of you for offering to do this special reading um I know this is some of the first uh, Cora content that we've all gotten in quite a while. So it's very exciting. Um, everyone who is watching at home, uh, again, thanks for joining us. And so what the um, purpose of this is, is these two lovely actors are going to read the first chapter essentially of our first official Legend of Korra graphic novel, which is Legend of Korra Turf Wars part one. Um, there are three parts and these are collected in three different graphic novels. And also all three of those are collected in a special library edition hardcover. Um, so all of those are available now through comic shops and bookstores. I think some of you are following along at home with your own physical copies. And we also were able to make a digital excerpt available for free. So if you go to digital.darkhorse.com, you will find that free excerpt. It's um, in the free section of digital, and also it should be on our homepage. Um, and you'll, you'll see this Legend of Korra banner, and there should be lots of clues to help guide you there. We've also got some links in the chat. Um, so go there and you can follow along, because there are a few scenes where uh, there aren't as many um, dialogue options, and you don't want to miss that great action in the spirit world. So. Cora and Asami are going to take us through that uh, first chapter of Turf Wars, um, which I want to give a shout out to the creative team on that comic. Um, they are written and created by the same creators of the animated series, Michael Dante DiMartino and uh, uh, Brian Konitsko. And then our art on Turf Wars is by the fabulous Irene Ko and colors by Killian Ng. Um, the covers are by Heather Campbell with Killian Ng on the later two and Jane Bach on the first. So we have some beautiful, beautiful art in these Korra comics. They are the official continuation of the show. And uh, where we're going to pick up here with this live reading is exactly where the animated series left off. Um, two quick announcements before we get right into it. I just want to let you know that we are doing a giveaway um, of the library edition of Turf Wars. And you'll also get a copy of each volume of Ruins of the Empire, which is the second Korra series. Um, these are the graphic novels that are available now. We do hope to do more in the future, but uh, stay tuned for any info on that. Nothing I can tell you just yet. Um, if you wanna enter the giveaway, um, it will be live actually starting now. You just need to enter the keyword in the chat, enter it once and only once, the keyword is, it's a made up word, it's Cora Comics, all one word, K-O-R-R-A-C-O-M-I-C-S, Cora Comics. Enter that once and you'll be entered in the giveaway. Um, and then after the reading, the final thing is we'll be doing a live Q&A with the voice actors. So if you have any questions about The Legend of Cora, please feel free to add those in the chat and our moderators will be pulling as many as we can and we'll get to those as soon as they're done with the reading. So now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Janet and Seychelles so they can present the first chapter of The Legend of Korra, Turf Wars, part one. Thanks, Kara. Uh, Thank yeah, Kara. thanks, guys. We're just going to jump in. Um, <clears throat> obviously, it's just the first chapter, and uh, kind of like we were saying, since everyone is sort of new to this um, staying at home thing, 
thanks for being responsible and protecting your uh, fellow humans. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that this sort of ran well and that we nobody dropped out and all that kind of good stuff. And if you enjoy it, um, definitely let uh, Dark Horse and Nickelodeon know, and hopefully we'll be able to do more of this because we, as you know, are as big a fans of the world of Avatar and Legend of Korra as you are. So, ready, say show? Yes, okay, let's go. Welcome to the spirit world. I, I can't believe I'm actually here. The spirit world is a pretty unpredictable place. You never know when the ground might drop right out from under you, so stay close. I don't want us to get separated. Me either. So, where do we start our vacation? Oh, Yay. look how tiny we are under these green leaves. Wow. This is these are fun. like leaf trees, one leaf trees, trees with one leaf. Hey, you try mushroom. to catch me on this oh. wonderful pink mushroom chain. Oh, you're a mushroom and I have ahead of me. Slow down. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Watch out for this, these amazing fish and their adorable bird beaks. Yeah, they, they look hungry. Um, <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful swirling spirity waterfall. Beautiful. Spirit. You thinking what I'm thinking? Race you to the top? <sighs> You've been a little slow, Avatar. Ha. I'm going easy on you. What, uh, what, what, what's happening? Whoa. Who dares climb upon me? Uh, I'm sorry, noble spirit. We didn't realize. I should have known, pesky humans. I'm not pesky. I'm the Avatar. Even worse. I didn't complain when you kept the northern and southern portals open, but creating a new one has gone too far. The human and spirit world should have remained separate. Uh, the, the new portal was kind of an accident. Leave my realm and never return. Cora, ah! ah! hang on, I got you. Oh. Oh. Asami, are you okay? Talk to me. Oh. Oh, what a disaster. I wanted our first big getaway to be perfect, not almost get us killed. I'm sorry. We've been through a lot worse together, and I'm not going to let one disgruntled spirit ruin all the fun we had. You shouldn't either. You're right. But unfortunately, we lost all our supplies, so we should probably think about heading back to the city. Sure. Before, Before we, we go, go, sorry, there's. Um, I got too excited. One last thing I want to do on our vacation. Uh oh. oh. This has been a wonderful few days. The best. Hey, remember when we first met and you took me race car driving? I remember how terrified you were. Was not. Anyway, what I remember the most was how relieved I felt. Relief? Yeah. My whole life, I was always told I was too wild, too emotional, too intense. But it turned out you could be just as intense as me. I've never had anyone in my life who, who got me the way you do. The three years you were gone were the longest of my life. I think that's when I realized how much you meant to me. 
I almost told you in one of my letters. Why didn't you? You'd already been away for so long. I guess I was scared if you didn't feel the same way, then maybe you'd never come back. Hmm. How about you? When did you know how you felt? Oh, after I was poisoned, you were there for me when I couldn't even be there for myself. But I was so messed up then. My mind was in a million different places. I, I didn't know if how I felt about you was real or not. But it wasn't an accident that you were the only one I wrote when I was gone. I'm glad you did. Oh, looks like our ride's here. How does this dragon bird keep knowing where to find us? Mm, I think it can sense where I am. Not every spirit hates me. <sighs> I wish we could stay longer. Once we're back in the city, I doubt we'll have a moment to rest. Uh, well, maybe our vacation doesn't have to end just yet. <clears throat> What do you mean? Cora, where are we going? It's a surprise. Wait, these portals won't take us back to Republic City. I thought we could visit my parents before we head back. Your parents? It's just, I, I mean, they're great, but I don't know if- No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. They're going to be thrilled when we tell them about us. Let, come on. Cora, what a surprise. We didn't expect you. I thought you were still on vacation. What did you think of the spirit world, Asami? It was quite an adventure, but we had to cut our trip a little short. Why? Are you two all right? We're fine, Dad. Nothing we couldn't handle together. How about we talk over dinner? You girls must be starving. It smells delicious, Mom. Thanks, sweetie. So, I'm excited to hear all about your trip. Well, it was fun. <clears throat> really fun. Sounds fun. I'm just going to come out and say it. Wow. Uh, I didn't think I'd be this nervous. Whatever it is, you can tell us. Okay. So, so as you know, Asami and I have been friends for a long time. And, well, I, I, I mean, I, I'm just as surprised as anyone. Your daughter is incredible, and I'm so thankful she feels the same way about me. What we're trying to say is we're, we're together. together. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I expected to hear, but we I couldn't be more pleased. It's wonderful. I am so happy for you too. <sighs> Thanks, Mom. So, who else have you told? Uh, you two are the first, but I guess once we get back to Republic City, everyone will know. Hmm. Just be careful, Cora. It's best to keep your personal life private. What's that supposed to mean? I, I, th I think what your father is trying to say is not everyone will be so accepting. <laughs> so? That's their problem. I don't care what they think. I'll tell whoever I want. Cora. Just don't get ahead of yourself, Cora. Sometimes you get a little too excited and- I've dealt with a lot of narrow-minded people. I just didn't realize you were one of them. Maybe we should go. Good idea. But you just got here. Yeah, Cora, please. I didn't mean to upset you. Too late for that. Vroom. I'm sorry about my parents. 
sometimes they can be so insensitive. They were just being overcautious. And I kind of understand where they're coming from. You do? Listen, I am not embarrassed or ashamed to be with you at all. So if you wanted to tell the world about us, I'd be right behind you. But there's a selfish part of me that wants you all to myself, at least for a little while longer. I guess that's why I was hesitant to tell your parents in the first place. Oh, I'm such an idiot. You, you were trying to tell me you didn't want to go and I just steamrolled over your feelings. Oh, my dad's right. I do get overexcited. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm excited too. But what we have, it's kind of like the spirit world. It's special and rare. And not everyone is going to see it that way. Asami, no matter what anyone says about us, I'll have your back. You can count on that. Same here. And that's chapter one of Turf In the Republic War. City. Oh, that's so fun. Woo. Aww. Oh, I love them. That's so great. Yeah, it's such beautiful art and so, so fun to, to have the world come alive in that way. And to, yeah, just to see it continued is, is a treat. Kara, do you want to take over and be the boss of us? I am waiting <laughs> to make sure that I am back on. Um, thank you so much. That was so fun. Um, as, as they said, everyone, uh, we would love to do more in the future if possible. Um, there's so much more to these graphic novels. Um, I mean, this is really just the very, very beginning. So um, thank you so much, Janet and Seychelle, for uh, especially all the extra voices. I loved those. <laughs> so good. Um, so everyone, are the giveaway, just so you know, the drawing is going to happen in just a few minutes. Um, that'll be automated. And if you were drawn as the winner, you'll get a little whisper from our channel. So watch for that. Um, and I'll, I'll announce once I see it go up. Um, in the meantime, as you all know, um, now that we are done with the really exciting part, which is, of course, that reading, um, we are going to give you a chance to ask questions of these fabulous voice actors. And uh, we have been collecting your questions as we have been going. Um, so I'm just gonna start right into that. We're gonna go for about probably 15, 20 minutes and then we'll cut it for time. So we'll answer as many questions as we can during that time. Um, and there are a lot of great questions. So thank you everyone. Uh, first up for both of you, how familiar with you were you with the world of Avatar The Last Airbender when the opportunity to work on Korra came up? And did you have to do a lot of research to prepare for your roles? I think we both were fans of the show, yeah? Right, Sajal? Yes. yes, definitely. Um, I, uh, some, some people might know, I, I also uh, was in the live action um, uh, version of the original series. I played Princess Yue and so, um, I had familiarized myself with the show before that role, and um, and then um, you know just deepened that with with this role. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think the best preparation, um, other than just being a fan of the first series, was the audition process because yeah. we really um, Mike and Brian and Nickelodeon were so amazing as they kind of went through and and narrowed down, um, you know. The, people that they were interested in and uh you know they gave great direction and so um honestly we auditioned a few times and you know there was some like mix and matching that that uh happened um as it was being finalized and everything so I think by the time I got the role I felt very connected to it which is why it was 
so scary and so it would have been so sad not to get it but you know most of the time you don't get stuff <laughs> so yeah I was ready to be you know you, we always say that like your audition is the that's the role like you that's your show you get ready and you get as ready as you can and then you go in and you do a five minute audition and that was your time being Cora or that was your time being this other character and you can't expect anything more so um that's what's emotional about it I think is when you attach yourself to a character because you want to do a good job then if you don't actually get to do that long term it's bittersweet right and so getting to revisit Cora and and this world over and over again was just this never-ending you know gift honestly I agree that, yeah. that actually touches on another question I saw come up which was how did you how did this opportunity come up for you um did it come through an agent or did you just happen to hear about it yeah, for me, um, for sure, it's total agent, total agent situation. But but Seychelle, you were in the the you had a relationship with the guys before. Yeah, it, um, I mean, uh, yeah, we we'd met at the uh, well, we actually met. It was funny um, on the plane. We'd like sat next to each other and didn't know who each other were, and then we were all at the baggage claim, and I was like seventeen or something, and with my mom, and we were all like, "Are you on the same project as us?" And they're like, "Yeah, we <laughs> created it." And you're like, "Oh," uh, and uh, so, <laughs> um, but, uh, and then, yeah, and then we, we met at, you know, the read through and, um, and then, um, yeah, after that production, they invited me to audition, which I was thrilled about. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then, you know, same audition process as, as Janet as well. And then, um, but yeah. And on kind of on a similar note, do either of you identify much with your characters? Um, or do you identify more with any other characters in the series? Hmm. Uh, I do for sure. Um, I mean, I've I've made no secret about identifying with like all of Cora's worst qualities, <laughs> 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 and not as many of her positive ones. Um, but you know, I really connected with, especially in the audition process. You know, as you guys know, the first bit of you know coming to know Cora at all she's you know very headstrong and she uses sarcasm to conceal nervousness or you know humor to sort of hide her vulnerability and that's definitely something that I could you know very much relate to and that's one of the things I always loved about her was that you know sometimes the people with the toughest exteriors are the ones who are you know hurting the most or who are the most afraid and um, so I always felt like I could feel that thread of that underneath, even though she seemed like she was so, you know, I'm the avatar and you got to deal with it. Um, <laughs> obviously she was had confidence, but I think, you know, she didn't realize how vulnerable she really was. So I related to all of that, I but love I love that. all the characters. Um, what about you, Seychelle? Um, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely, um, pretty different from Asami. Like I'm just not as smart as her. Um, and uh and she's, i mean she's, she's very so smart Seychelles is very very very, very and, smart and, guys <laughs> no but uh, well i well, i mean in like the in like making stuff and like i'm not i mean i'm, I'm an okay driver i'm okay um I, but uh <laughs> um she's she's just really cool and in, in that way um i i think that the the most i, I think i'm a lot more awkward than she is but i, I think she i i look you know i i think she's um i Sorry, this is a good example of that. Um, but <laughs> I think the way in which we're most similar is um, I also um, feel, you know, she's a, she's a very loyal friend, and I, I I consider that to be something that you know I have had some of my friends for a really long time, and you know, and I and she's you know finds ways to like you know she's not a bender, and she finds ways to like you know participate, and <laughs> and I have you know you know come across. Um, you know drawbacks and I, I singing comes to mind um when as a singer um and like not having vibrato for like the first 10 years I could sing and just being like I really really want this vibrato and then you know like and, and just you know trying to come at it from different ways and then finally finding um so I don't know that's, that's but but my favorite character is uh Lynn Beifong she's um yeah. she's just my favorite I, I I love her so much I love such her. a great character yeah <laughs> Do you, either of you have any favorite um, companions, like some of the creatures from the series? Oh, all the animals are so great. I mean, yeah. I'm going to be partial to Naga because 
Oh, course, right. You know, Cora and Naga went through a lot together, but give me an oppa, give me a fire ferret. We totally yeah, I was as I say oppa. I'm just I love the um the sky bisons. I think they're um that's that's what they're called, right? Air, <laughs> air, bison. air bisons. Yeah. yeah. I love um, the one in Turf Wars that's the little toy that is missing a button eye. I love, I just yeah. love the idea of like <laughs> merchandise inside. Yeah. Inside the world. In the world. Like, why yeah. not? Yeah. It's great. Um, yeah. I like that everything's like, uh, you know, combination animals. There was like a weird, there's one in the series that was like a half pigeon have something else it was like a weird like fancy pigeon or something and I love pigeons and I just <laughs> I am here for a fancy pigeon any day uh, awesome so, um, I think that was actually one of my first questions um before I had watched more of the series and was just starting to see the comics was actually wait is this a polar bear or a dog and they were just like but <laughs> yes does it have to be one of <laughs> Um, so another favorite question, what are some of your favorite Korra and Asami moments of the series? Oh man. I have mine. Um, I, I have always loved the episode where we are stuck in the desert and we make the sand sailor. Um, yeah. I just, it's just the coolest thing to me. And that was so much fun to imagine in my head as we were reading it. Um, and even in watching it, it's like just as fabulous. <laughs> I love that episode. Uh, same. That was actually the thing that that sprung to my mind as well. Um, and so because you already said that, I'll just, the other thing that I flashed <laughs> to was, um, was when we were at, I believe, New York Comic Con and we were able to watch um, the episode Cora Alone of the fourth season where she writes the letter to Asami and is saying, you know, you're kind of the only one Kind of like what she was saying in, in Turf Wars just then, that like you're the only one I feel like I can really still connect with. Um, and when we were uh, watching that all together and it was the first time those of us who could be there had seen it, the whole place just like exploded with like Korasami love. Um, oh my and that God. Was before it was even canon or anything. And wow. so it was so exciting to hear that response and to be like, mm -hmm, well, just you wait. Yeah. Awesome. Uh. I love, I love both of those answers. Um, if there is ever a live action Legend of Korra series, I mean, this is a little bit of a given, but which actresses should play Korra and Asami? Oh, I, I mean, there's so many amazing I, women out there who would do a fantastic job. Um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're, this, these these are questions that are always hard for me. I, I, yeah, this is like, give me, I, I give me blank. two yeah. weeks to research all of our <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> actors. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what would Cora do for a job if bending didn't exist? Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Great question. <laughs> Because my first response was like, oh, pro bending. And then it was like, oh yeah, pro bending's <laughs> not a thing in this universe. <laughs> um, gosh, that's a great question. I don't know. For some reason, I, I love the idea of her like, <laughs> this sounds so silly probably, but I, 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 she still, I still think of her as so strong and so um, capable that I, I kind of love the idea of her like, you know, this is very earthbendery, but you know, like working as a like a landscaper or a builder. Like I, I imagine her making amazing things, which is also something she could do with Asami. Like just making yeah. the world beautiful and strong, whatever that means. Whether it's building a you know a temple or building um, a garden or something like that. I feel like that, and it would be good for her. It would keep her you know kind of grounded, pun intended. Do you think Asami could ever manage to teach Cora to drive? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think she could. I think, you know, because Cora, you know, when she had trouble with airbending, um, uh, that was no, that was no picnic. Um, and so I, I think Cora, I mean, Cora is obviously very capable <laughs> of many things. I think, I think it would take some time, obviously. Um, but I think, yeah, I think I could. Sami could. That's good to hear. 
Yeah, Seychelles couldn't, but Asami could. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this one's kind of similar, also funny. Um, how would Cora handle being CEO of Future Industries for a day, with a caveat, uh, without Asami's help? She'd be garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I think she has, we all know she has these awkward moments of non-diplomacy where, you know, sometimes she shines and sometimes she doesn't, but I definitely imagine her like wanting to solve things quickly, like her impatience taking over and just sort of, you know, and doing that thing where she's, she's a little stubborn and she's like, I'm sure I can handle this. And then, you know, all it takes is like her accidentally air bending a sheaf of important papers that were super organized, like into the air and they just cascade everywhere. And she just sort of buries her head on the desk, like, Masami. <laughs> I can see that being a, a bonus scene. <laughs> um, do you have any particular favorite or just most memorable lines from the show? Um, probably gonna take some thought. I don't know. Um, I mean, you know, in the, the last scene when in the finale, when we're, you know, uh, Nasami's like, I need a vacation. And, and um, and I was like anywhere. And I, I, I like the, I've never been to the spirit world. Um, I, you know, that kind of, I just, I love that. That's like what she said. Um, and I, because that, that would be my choice, I think. Also. Yeah, I guess I feel like I'm, it's clear what my favorite line of the show is. Um, oh, that's a good line. The, this is not the line I say. All my favorite lines are, are things that other people tell Cora as advice. But um, but yeah, that's Be the Leaf has uh, been extraordinarily important for me in my own life. And, uh, and I've been saying it to myself a ton right now, right? Because there's so much that feels like it's not in my control. Um, and there's so much that I think a lot of us would like to be able to do to help, you know, make the situation better, faster, or easier for others. Um, and, and, you know, some of it is just like having to not do stuff. Like sometimes it's like stay, staying home <laughs> and staying out of someone's way is helping and I think um if you're like me and you want to be in Dan Cora and you want to do 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 like how do I solve this how do I um it's that's when be the leaf becomes so important like you you need to you know just be present and listen and respond and empathize and you know that's a more passive way of of helping but to me that's very be the leaf yeah an excellent description. Thank you. It is very relevant right now. Um, a relevant question, in fact. Um, if Cora and Asami had to quarantine themselves at home, like we have to now, how would they pass the time? <laughs> I like this question. Um, yeah, I feel like Asami would be like, you know, a tinkerer, um, tinkering away at um, little projects, um, you know, making fun stuff, maybe fun, like smart house stuff, like, um, oh, nice. you know, like a, like an automated smoothie maker or a blender That's is so what funny. they're called. I, um, I was literally, I was literally about to say, I feel like Cora would ask Asami to like make a faster noodle preparer or something. <laughs> so then Cora would be like, my part is I help eat everything. I'm a tester. Yeah. I test everything out. You'll heat it up, you know, when the oven's broken right. or whatever. That's um, right. <laughs> um, did you know, or at what point did you find out that Cora and Asami would be forming a relationship? Well, we found out together. Yeah. I can't remember exactly where we were in the recording process, but we, but Mike and Brian took us um, just like kind of outside the recording booth and, 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 and said they, right, Seychelles? They yeah. Kind of yeah. Said, like, I remember what, it was right. Here's right where outside. we're going with this. Yeah. And they were like, mm -hmm. are you guys, like, how do you guys feel about it? And we were both like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the easiest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, they were, very, we're like, do, um, does need to be a longer conversation? Should we pretend yeah. <laughs> like we need to talk about it more or because <laughs> we love it? Yeah. It was, yeah, it was great. 
very exciting news. Um, yeah, that was the first. Did, did you um, uh, remember it? Did you hear about the the shipping, the Korosami shipping before that? Because I think I yeah. had to. I'm trying to remember because it's been years now. But um, I think, yeah, I just wanted to see if you, because um, I because I think that I did also before. Yeah. That's why I wasn't the hugest, was um, you know, surprise or anything, um, considering that that existed, that narrative already. Yeah. And how do you like the comics as the official continuation of the series? Um, maybe especially with that in mind and how we get to explore that relationship more in the comics. Um, for, I mean, I enjoyed the heck out of these. Um, I, I was just telling them, I, I really like the character Jargala, who's the, the head of the Creeping Crystals. Um, and just her like gem bending is so cool. Um, and, 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 and just, uh, I, I just, it's, it's been, I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, same, same. And um, for those of you who, if you've listened to my podcast, the JV Club, you already know that uh, that Irene uh, Co came on and, and did my podcast. And so I got to spend even more time telling her how awesome she is. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm not an illustrator. I didn't, I, I'm not a person who can draw. I never really have been. And, and so I'm such a huge fan. In fact, you can see some of this. I'm hoping if we get to do it again, I can put even more stuff. Like I can sort of rotate out because and Seychelle has her little collection. And my too, little tiny. To like <laughs> figure out how to feature all the wonderful stuff that we've been given over the years. Um, and so, uh, so just getting the the texture of the illustration particularly because it starts in the spirit world was um was so fun to see uh, and so masterfully done i love it yeah i always i really enjoy the um the like back the paintings you know and there's some i mean the spirit world spread is so cool and then there's one i'm sorry there's one more uh that's like when they get to Republic City, or maybe I don't know where it is. There's like the buildings and, you know, like we have the, the art books and you, and you see the paintings of the buildings and they're just expressions. Everything is like so spot on. It's so cool. Yeah, Mike and Brian and the whole team from the beginning uh, from The Last Airbender, this, their world building is like, you know, there's, there's nothing better, my, my opinion. Yeah. Before the comics were released, did you have any headcanons about what Korra and Asami did together in the spirit world? And if so, were you surprised at all by what you saw in the comics? I didn't know it was coming because I feel like I have uh, i can't keep my mouth shut. So if anyone had told me anything, I would have blabbed it accidentally in the middle of like a Q&A at a Comic-Con. So uh, everything is always a surprise for me. I feel like I, I find stuff out from the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't think I had any, um, head cannons. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I just, it's, I feel like it's more of like, when I thought about it, it's like colors and, and you know, the, how the spirit, like the picture behind Janet, um, with like all the That's different cool. spirits. You see. Yeah. You can see that a little Ooh. bit better. That's cool. That's beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Head cannon wise. Um, I'm always like, yeah. I guess I keep it empty because I'm waiting to see how it gets filled up by the those guys. <laughs> yeah, they're the masters of the storytelling and they're very, <laughs> very skilled at it. <laughs> very, very good at what they do for sure. Um, could you describe Cora and Asami's dream wedding? if we go backwards, I just, just at the end of the wedding, um, like after the reception, we definitely have some Sato mobiles, you know, with like cans and stuff. Um, for sure. You know, that's, uh, you know, trailing off. Um, so that's, that's definitely happening. That's where we're leaving from the wedding in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great question. Um, I think because my head is so in what we just read and thinking about you know, everything that Cora went through and 
kind of just the, I don't, this sounds bad and it, I don't mean it bad. I'm, the good noise and the bad noise. So I think that their trip into the spirit realm was so good for both of them that my immediate knee-jerk response is kind of that they would want something very small, um, not because they don't want to celebrate with the people they care about, but just, you know, I feel like um, they both kind of get thrust into situations where they're having to lead a big group or, you know, be, give a speech or, you know, be part of this, yeah. this big kind of busy scene. And so I think um, them having the chance to just make it about the two of them even with like a ceremony, I think might be really lovely. Yeah, I think that that one works for me. A small I family think. affair. <laughs> I was my my second thought was um, if we did want to have something bigger, um, was something you know how the spirit vines took all over the the city, um, and there's like really cool images of like these huge trees with all these like roots and like they're intertwined with the buildings and I, I think like that could be a cool setting too because it's like um the city is like the asami kind of vibe and then Korra represents you know the the avatar and the connection to the spirit and so it's kind of like this like you uh, know intertwining forever um feeling that's very strong imagery seychelle very <laughs> strong thank yeah. you so much uh yeah it's national geographic <laughs> <laughs> well now now we've got it on record so Take note. Um, do you feel we have time maybe for a couple more questions if you guys are okay with it? Sure, sure. Um, we'll do say two, three more. Um, gosh, there's so many good questions. Thank you again, everybody. And yeah, if we are able to do more in the future, we'll take some more. Um, for now, let's see. Um, a little bit more on the serious side. Um, did you do any preparation for heavier episodes um, like Cora dealing with PTSD? Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, I, that's a fun question to answer because I feel like my answer is like, well, I, I lived with PTSD, so I have been preparing for that stuff uh, leading up to getting to do it and depict it through The Legend of Korra. Um, that was, uh, yeah, that stuff wasn't hard for me at all. Um, the emotional stuff that Korra goes through is, for me, the easiest to access. Um, it's it's like the the ADR and the action and the like running in place all of the sort of sound effects of like you're falling but Janet's not really falling that's the <laughs> stuff that I have to kind of practice and you know really tried to get better at and um and wanted it to sound you know as real as possible um the the emotional stuff the intense stuff um I I really it's so beautifully written um that you know it's it, it, it wasn't hard to to go there, if that makes sense. And to end on a fun question, um, what element would you most like to be able to bend? <laughs> I know Seychelles. I said this answer. earlier. Well, yeah, everybody knows my answer. Um, the, uh, the I'd be an earth bender. Um, and but I think I'd want to be like a gem bender, like Jargala. But but regardless, something in the earth realm I, I i don't know what it is i, I can't like articulate it but it's, ever since the first series i'm just there's something about earthbenders i just i think they're so cool it encompasses so much too my, i don't my puppy is barking it who knows what. <laughs> uh it, it, yeah there's so every, every time like the amount of different ways that earthbenders like the amount of different materials that encompasses i think is so yeah. impressive it's almost like when you have three wishes and you wish for more wishes it's like Hmm, earth yeah. no, but not also we get this 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 um I, i'm very partial to the water tribe i love um i love season two just sort of getting to be in that snowy i'm from the desert and so um i really have that relationship to water as being this kind of like key mysterious wonderful you know what's happening in the bottom of the ocean kind of thing like I'm very fascinated by all of that so that's and then I love snow um and that's something that you know I only lived three years of my life in snow so it's easy for me to say that because I didn't have to like scrape ice off my car um but but I but I love that I love that world so um I probably would say water 
Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to answer all of these questions. Thank you to all the fans, everybody in the chat for giving us questions. Um, we did draw a winner earlier. I'm oh. going to hopefully pronounce this right. Um, Gal Pal Kyrie, I think. G-A-L-P-A-L-K-Y-R-I-E. Um, so Congrats. we'll whisper you and we'll do some DMing so we can get your shipping info. You won the library edition plus the Ruins of the Empire, all three. Hey. Nice. And all of these, I know I saw somebody asking earlier, um, everything that we're talking about here today, Turf Wars, all parts one through three, and Ruins of the Empire, parts one through three, are all available at comic shops and bookstores now. Um, I know during these times of social distancing, it's a challenge maybe to get to a shop or for them to be open, but some are. Um, so some resources that are great to check would be comicshoplocator.com or indiebound.org. Um, those can both help you find any comic shops and uh, bookstores that are near you. And we just recommend that you contact them and see what their options are right now. Some are offering um, pickup, some are offering online ordering and delivery. So we really appreciate anyone who can go out and support your local comic shop or bookstore at this time. Um, or of course, there are online ordering options as well always on Amazon and places like that. So we are fortunate Dark Horse has a book distributor. So even though Diamond is shut down right now for single issues, um, Penguin Random House is still making our books available um, for order from those bookstores and other retailers. So um, those are options and Dark Horse Digital as well, which is where that free excerpt that uh, was read today is available for a limited time only. So get on that while you can. Um, I think that's about it on the comics front. Um, another common question, which I'll hit really quick, is um, yes, there will be a VOD. Um, we will have a recording available. Uh, we are working with Nickelodeon on that. So once we have teamed up to plan the release, we will absolutely let you know. So this will be available to watch again later. Um, Thank you again so much, Janet and Seychelle, for participating and just being available today to do this. Thank oh, you gosh. so much, Kara, for facilitating yeah. and um, being the best moderator. Um, and also thank you to Janet. Um, this was Janet's idea. And um, when she brought this to me, I was very excited, um, you know, because we're all holed up um, right now. And so so this is a really cool um, way, I think, to interact with each other and, you know, through art in this beautiful world that Brian and Mike created. Um, so I'll say thank you to her and thank you to everyone for tuning in because um, you guys are why we can do this. Everything you said is exactly how I feel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. We're so lucky to have you know, Dark Horse is such an amazing group of people and Nickelodeon, Mike and Brian and, and you guys, the fans, thank you Twitch, just um, to have a reason to be able to, um, you know, kind of sort of zoom in on, on, on this stuff and this show and these worlds um, was, is, is such a pleasure and a privilege. And, and so, um, yeah, thanks for showing up and uh, hopefully we'll get to uh, revisit more. Yeah, wash your I hands. Yeah. <laughs> stay home everybody stay safe we have lots of digital comics available for you to read from home or anywhere so thank you again so much to everyone both for participating in the chat and just watching today and janet and seychelle for your amazing reading and we hope to do this again soon so stay tuned for more info Yay. all right bye, bye y'all bye, bye. <laughs>